Welcome everyone to the continuation of the discussion of your module number three, Environmental Chemistry. So to recall, this is the content of the module. Uh, last meeting, we are already finished with the chemistry of water, or rather the chemistry of the atmosphere. Now we tackle the chemistry of the water. And to reiterate, this is the learning outcome that you should achieve at the end of Module 3. Explain the processes of chemistry in the environment. This is the content of the topic that we have. So we will start it with what is water, some trivia and facts about it, your hydrology and hydrological cycle, including your water quality and its parameters. So what is water? So the uh, official definition of water is a clear, colorless, and odorless, and tasteless liquid essential for most plant and animal life. If we tackle the nomenclature of your water, it's H2O, or it contains two hydrogen and one oxygen, having a scientific name of dihydrogen monoxide, although this particular scientific name is not often used. Water is liquid at standard temperature and pressure. The intrinsic color of water and ice is a very slight blue hue, although they appear colorless in small quantities. Water is essentially invisible if it is in its gaseous state. Water is a very good solvent and is often referred to as your universal sol solvent. Substances uh, that dissolved in water are the following salts, sugars, acids, alkalis, and some gases, especially your oxygen, carbon dioxide, via the process of your carbonation. These are known to be water-loving substances, or that's uh, a term that we often use is hydrophilic, while those that do not mix well with water, um, examples are fats and oil, are known as hydrophobic or water-fearing substances. Uh, some facts about your water is um, the boiling point, of course, is dependent on the barometric pressure. So your water, um, if you go on top of the Mount Everest, which is at a higher elevation, lower pressure, it will boil at 68 degrees Celsius compared to that of 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. And if you did your experiment proper, di ba mapapansin nyo rin that here in Baguio City, the water boils at less than 100 degrees Celsius. So conversely, water deep in the ocean near geothermal vents can reach temperatures of hundreds of degrees Celsius and still they can remain liquid. So other properties of water will include the maximum density of water occurs at 3.98 degrees Celsius and it has the anomalous property of becoming less dense, not more when it is cooled down or in its solid form, which is your ice. So meaning, di ba, um, yung medyo dinidefine yung property ng, ng density kasi nga, di ba, pag naglagay ka ng, usually, pag naglalagay ka ng solid sa liquid, lumulubog yung solid. However, in the case of water, if you put ice, or that's your solid form of water, most of the time is lumulutang siya. So, it's less dense. Also, it expands to occupy 9% greater volume in its solid state, which accounts for the fact that ice floating on liquid water as in icebergs. So, yun. And let's go to let's go to some trivia and facts about water. Only three percent of Earth's water is fresh, and ninety percent, ninety-seven percent is salt water. So although, di ba, mapapansin yon sa sa Earth, sobra nating daming body of water. However, only three percent yung accessible sa atin. Kasi yun lang yung fresh. The other ninety-seven percent is salt water, which is hindi natin siya often na nagagamit unless we let it go through your desalination process, which is very costly and uh, hindi masyadong efficient. And another fact is that ninety percent of the world's supply of fresh water is located in the Antarctica. 
And the total amount of water in a human body is about 37 liters. So, medyo mabigat-bigat. Average lang naman yan. So, you are mostly uh, made up of water. So, other trivia is that your human brains are 75% water and a person can live about a month without food but only about a week without water. If a human does not absorb enough water, of course, dehydration occurs. Hot water more, weighs more than cold water. So, pwede kayo mag-experiment dyan. Mag, mag weigh kayo ng the same amount of water, the same volume, tapos i-weigh nyo siya pag mainit and i-weigh nyo siya i-weigh nyo siya pag, mas malam, pag malamig, then you will be able then to uh, prove that the hot water will be heavier than that of the cold water. So it's another that. Frogs do not drink water as they absorb the water through their skin. And although Mount Everest is at around 29,028 feet and often called the tallest mountain on Earth, the Mauna Kea, an inactive volcano on the island of Hawaii is actually taller. Only 13,796 feet of Mauna Kea stands above sea level, yet it is actually 33,465 feet tall if you measure it in the ocean floor to its summit. So, kasi ano lang siya, nasa ocean floor siya, kaya um, ang basis kasi natin ng... Uh, ng measurement is from the sea level kaya 13,796 lang sa but if you um, if you measure it from its ocean floor 33,465 feet siya so dapat sana mas mataas siya kaysa kay Mount Everest and also water is the only substance that is found naturally on earth in its three forms that is your liquid gas in Solid. Naturally. Kasi syempre yung iba, um, we put heat directly into it, so hindi na yung natural. So naturally, diba, liquid is sa oceans, the solid phase is yung mga icebergs, and then the gaseous phase is uh, our water vapor in the atmosphere. So in a hundred year period, a water molecule spends 98 years in the ocean, 20 months as ice, about two weeks in lakes and rivers, and less than a week in the atmosphere. So, yun yung kanyang cycle. So, let's go to your hydrology and hydrological cycle. When we say hydrology, this is simply the study of water and its movement along its various pathways within the hydrological cycle. It is often applied by engineers who use hydrological principles to compute river flows from rainfall, water movement in soils from knowledge of soil characteristics, evaporation rates from water balance, or energy balance techniques. So you will dig deeper into this when you go to your hydrology course in your higher years. Introduction. So this is the hydrological cycle that you know. So, yung medyo simple pa, di ba elementary pa lang tinuro na to. So, water from the ocean or from the river, rivers, lakes, soil, vegetation, they will evap evaporate to the atmosphere. And then in the atmosphere, it will undergo condensation where in from vapor, it will be, uh, it will be in its liquid form. And then, pag medyo heavy na clouds, di ba, that's the time that it will precipitate. So, yan yung simple lang na hydrological cycle. So, when we say hydrological cycle, it's actually the cycle of water. Right? And uh, later on, I uh, will be... Um, ito na nga. Ito. So, this is a more detailed cycle, uh, hydrological cycle. So, as you see, we'll, uh, as you see medyo madami-dami na siyang... Um, extracurricular or aside from the evaporation, condensation, precipitation, mas madami na siya ngayong pinagdadaanan. So, we have uh, special terms for special type of evapor uh, special type of uh, phase or yung kanyang process. So, if you go here, di ba, evaporation from 
the um, vegetation or whatnot. So, from evaporation, tataas yung water natin. Pag sa ocean, evaporation na yung tawag. But, there's such this term na tinatawag natin evapotranspiration. And, in your homeworks, diba, I ask you to define this part. And then, of course, pag nandun na siya sa taas, diba, um, that that is where the condensation condensation will occur. And upon precipitation, pag heavy na clouds, may iba-iba din tayong mangyayari. Pwede yung simple precipitation lang, rainfall, tapos meron ding infiltration na magaganap, meron ding surface runoff, etc., etc. So, those, I, I believe those ter terms is, na-define nyo na sa homework. So, this is just uh, what happens in the hydrological cycle. So, um, in your notes, you can just go ahead and uh, feel free to check this out para hindi na natin masyadong discuss since ang dami naman na and kasama naman na siya sa inyong homework. So, let's go to the water qualities and its parameters. So, how do we measure the quality of water? What are the parameters involved? So, dito natin siya. Uh, uh, this is just an introduction. Again, the deeper, um, the depth of this will be tackled in your hydrology course. So, water in nature is most nearly pure when it is in its evaporation state. However, as it condenses, it acquires impurities and they are added to the liquid. And then when water travels through the remainder of the hydrologic cycle and comes into contact with materials in the air and on earth beneath the earth's surface. So, hindi na din masyadong pure pag once na bumagsak na siya sa lupa through precipitation. In addition, of course, human activities contribute further to the impurities in the form of industrial, domestic, agricultural, and other uh, contaminants. This impure water returns to the atmosphere as relatively pure molecules again through evaporation. So the impurities accumulated by water throughout the hydrologic cycle and as a result of human activities may be both suspended or dissolved solids. So yun na yung makikita nyo. Kung makikita nyo dito sa picture, di ba? Yan yung medyo madumi yung tubig, lalo na pag Di ba yung tagal-tagal na hindi umulan? Tapos bigla na lang umulan, medyo madumi yung uh, tubig. Na, tubig wala. So, colloids are also very small particles that are suspended but often exhibit many characteristic of dissolved substances. So, these are the water quality parameters that we will be tackling. So, we have your physical, chemical, biological, and radiological. So, let's go to the physical first. So, sa physical water quality, um, first one is your suspended solids. So, when we say suspended solids, solids, these are fine particles of sediment in the water. Usually, pag ano, nakikita to sa bottom. Diba? Pag nagkanda kayo ng sedimentation, yun, kung ano yung particles na nasa ilalim after the sedimentation process, yun yung suspended solids. So, as you can see here, the examples are soil, biological solids, decaying organic matter, and particles that are discharged in your wastewater. So, ganyan yung itsura niya. So, uh, dito, di ba, pag merong tubig, yan, tapos ita-dry, uh, syempre, pag na-dry na yung, kunyari, yung wastewater, yan, di ba, meron, mat meron matitira doon sa, sa bottom ng pan, and then that is your suspended solids. Next, water quality parameter in the physical uh, area is your turbidity. When we say turbidity, this is a measure of the extent to which light is either absorbed or scattered by suspended material in water. So, although the tur turbidity is not really a direct quantitative measure of suspended solids. So, kung turbid yung water, it's not necessarily mean na madaming suspended solids. The turbidity... Uh, may have been contributed by other factors. So, ganyan. So, yung parang, uh, ang labo, ganyan. Turbid yung water pag medyo malabo. So, this is an example of a turbid water. So, if you get to compare, this is the water having a low turbidity to high 
turbidity. Another physical water quality parameter is your color. So pure water is colorless as perceived by the naked eye, but water in nature is often colored by foreign substances. So we have two types of color, that's your apparent color and true color. When we say apparent color, this is the color partly due to the suspended solids, and true color is contributed by your dissolved solids that remain after the removal, removal of your suspended solids. So yeah. Next physical property or physical parameter is your taste and odor. So substances that produce an odor in water will almost invariably impart a taste as well. However, there are many mineral substances that produce taste but no odor. So kaya sila magkasama sa physical water quality. So another physical property is temperature. And it's one of the most important parameter in water quality. So temperature of surface water governs the biological species present and their rates of activity. And temperature has an effect on most chemical reactions that occur in water and also it has an effect on solubility of gases in water. So yun, kasi kapag uh, masyadong mataas yung temperature ng water, just a few, um, few increase in the degree uh, in the degree of the temperature malaki na po yung effect niyan sa mga uh, aquatic plants and animals that lives in it so another water quality parameter is the chemical so yung sa physical di ba meron tayong lima meron tayong um yon yung lady yung temperature taste and odor tapos yung turbidity tapos yung color tsaka yung ano ba yung pinakauna na balikan natin the very first one is yun, suspended solids. So, sa physical, yung lima na yun. Now, let's go to the chemical. So, sa chemical naman, the very first one is the total dissolved solids. Di ba yung kanina, suspended solids, kasi nakikita mo, ito yung na-dissolve mismo sa water. So, total dissolved solids. These are usually the material that remains after water filtration. And this material is left as a solid residue upon evaporation of the water and constitutes a part of the total solids. Your dissolved solids may either be organic or inorganic. So usually, di ba, pag yung shortcut na method, yan, yeah, meron tayong TDS um, meter para mag-compute uh, or i-dip mo lang siya sa water and then ma-compute niya na yung total dissolved solids. Pero if you opt to do the long method, medyo matagal siyang gawin. So next um, chemical parameter is your alkalinity. When we say alkalinity, this, is al this has something to do with its pH. So the, the, uh, the definition of alkalinity is that it's the quantity of ions in water that will react to neutralize hydrogen ions. So, it is also the measure of the ability of water to neutralize your acids. Um, the following ions contributes to the alkalinity of your water. So, meron kang carbonate, carbonic acid, ito mga to. So, yung mga ions na yan, they are the ones contributing to the alkalinity of your water. So, ito siya. So, how do you measure your alkalinity or pH? So, when you are at the 7, Range 7, big sabihin, neutral yung water nyo. But if you get to compare with certain uh, materials, so yung battery nyo is very acidic, kasi dito siya banda, di ba? Pag sa pH meter nyo, uh, lemon, juice, vinegar, they're acidic. And then, kung papunta naman tayo sa baba, you have your ammonia, your lye, milk of magnesia, baking soda, they are somewhat alkaline or basic. So, the third chemical parameter is your hardness. When we say hardness, this is the concentration of all multivalent cations in a solution. Or, uh, most often than not, we associate it with the calcium and magnesium ions. So, yung dalawang ions na yun, your calcium and magnesium ions, most often than not, they are the ones who are contributing to the hardness of water. So, ganito. Siguro mapapansin nyo to, usually, dito sa Baguio, kasi medyo hard yung water natin dito. 
Pag yun sa mga shower heads, nagkakaroon kayo ng parang scales na tinatawag namin, ganyan, masyadong hard yung water. So, marami siyang calcium and magnesium ions. Or, dito, usually sa pipes, sa loob ng pipes, pag hard water yung pinapadaan, ayan, over time, nag-accumulate, nagkakaroon ng scaling. Um, mapapansin nyo dito sa takore, diba, sa kettles nyo, kung lagi kayo nagpapainit ng tubig, yung white material dun, um, that's actually due to your hardness. Pwede din siya sa thermos, ba? Diba? Pag over time na nilalagyan nyo siya ng mahinit ng tubig palagi, yung white material na nag-accumulate doon, that's due to your hardness. Calcium and magnesium ions. Next is your fluorides. So, chemical parameter pa rin. This is seldom found in appreciable quantities in the surface water. It's very toxic to humans and animals in large quantities, but also they are very official they are very beneficial in small concentrations. So, pag fluorides, nagkakaroon ng fluorosis. Pag nasa sobrahan. So, ganyan yung nagiging effect niya. Pag medyo tumaas ng konti yung concentration ng fluoride sa water. Another chemical parameter is your metals. Although yung metals naman kasi natin, di ba na-discuss na natin siya doon sa inyong... Um, engineering materials, module 2. So, these are just some of the info that you need to um, you need to know about metals and waters. So, itong mga talang, uh, you just go over it. So, yan. So, another chemical parameter is your nutrients. So, elements essential to the growth and reproduction of plants and animals and aquatic species depend on the surrounding water to provide the nutrients. However, when nutrients are in abundance, it may lead to a problem that we call your eutrophication. So, natural aging process in which the water is organically enriched, leading to increasing aquatic, aquatic weeds or algal bloom. So, ganyan po. So, parang masyadong maraming nutrients yung tubig, kaya nagkakaroon ng eutrophication. So, ganito yung tsura niya. Pag greenish na yung water, yan, yung parang ang dami niyang algae sa iba pa. Ibig sabihin, masyado maraming nutrients yung water. And, six pala tayo. And the next is your organics, another parameter. So, you have your natural organics and you also have your synthetic organics. So, when we say natural organics, these are caused by decay of organic solids. And when we say synthetic, these are a result of your water wastewater discharges, usually from agricultural practices. So, let's go to the biological. So, tapos na tayo sa physical, chemical, next is biological. So, usually your biological or uh, biological water quality is uh, mainly uh, contrib the main contributing factor is your pathogens. When we say pathogens, these are biological organisms in water that are capable of infecting or transmitting diseases to humans. They are not native to aquatic systems and usually require a host for growth and reproduction. Species of pathogens can survive in water and maintain infections capabilities for significant periods of time. So let's classify your pathogens. The first one is we have a bacteria. So when we say bacteria, these are single cell organisms that can exist either as independent or free-living organisms or as parasite, meaning they are dependent on another organism. Another class, a classification of your pathogens is your virus. So when we say virus, it's the smallest biological structure which are known to contain all the genetic information necessary for their own reproduction. They cannot multiply on their own, so they have to invade a host or a cell that will take over its machinery in order to replicate itself. The third one is your protozoa. It's considered the lowest form of animal life. They are complete and self-contained organisms that can be free or parasitic, pathogenic or non-pathogenic. Most protozoa are microscopic in size and can be seen under a microscope. However, they do breathe, move, and reproduce like multi-celled animals. Another is your helminths. So, these are parasitic worms. The life cycle of your helminths often involve two or more animal hosts, one of which can be human 
and contamination may, re may result from human or animal waste that contain helmets. So contaminations could also be via other species such as na snails or insects. So yun yung apat na classification of your pathogens. Now let's go to your radiological. Now, yun na, tapos na tayo sa physical, chemical, biological. Next is your radiological. Excessive exposure, as we all know, excessive exposure to radioactive materials is actually harmful. Um, there may be unnecessary exposure. Uh, kung baga, hindi mo din naman alam kung yung iniinom mong water is nakontaminate ng uh, radioactive substances. Uh, naturally occurring radioactive Materials, compounds include your radon and radium-226. Strontium-90 and tritium are also found in surface water resulting from atmospheric nuclear weapon testing fallout. Arampan to, di ba, dun sa uh, discussion natin during the module 1, yung nuclear chemistry. The most significant radionuclides associated with drinking water is usually your dissolved radio, radon gas. So, radon is colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas occurring naturally in groundwater. So, we have an illustration here of how radon enters your um, enters your water, groundwater usually. So, yeah. It's just a simple illustration. So, that's it for the chemistry of water. The next topic that we will have is on soil chemistry. So, please do make sure that you finish your activity and that will be passed next week. So, please stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. Goodbye, everyone.